محمد عبد الله داني بسم الله كلنا سوا امين والابن والروح القدوس ختموا موهبات الروح القدوس We have lived a life always with a lack of identity. As much as we're comfortable in every country we were, we were extremely good citizens. We did extremely well socially, culturally. Um, that identity thing was always that marking point that got us to be different from the others. Quand tu passes aux frontières, tu es Omar. Tu t'appelles Walid, tu, tu es Leila. Donc, il va toujours y avoir un préjudice contre nous, malgré que nous sommes des victimes. Avec un passeport canadien, tu peux aller, qui n'est pas le cas pour beaucoup d'Arabes qui, qui ont juste des passeports arabes. In 1994, we became Canadian citizens. At that time, my daughter went as a lawyer to work in the West Bank. And they helped the PLO start writing all the bylaws for a Palestinian entity after the Oslo Agreement. And while she was there, she made arrangements uh, for us to go and visit Haifa. And uh, we flew 50 years after we left it. first four years of my life. It was then Haifa, Palestine. That's my house. The same stone, the same balconies, the same everything, and all the apartments there belong to each one of the children of my grandfather. When we came the first time here, we were so stunned that my wife and I basically had our destiny drawn from the day of my birth, because our street, Sahyun Street, intersects with Huri. When you have a name of a street that belongs to you, that can be stronger than that. Generally, I used to like speaking with the grocery store man before going up because he makes me laugh. Because it's very painful for me to go up. Very, very painful. Small, modest house. This was my parents' bedroom. The other tiles are underneath. I'm standing where, where the birds were. And this is the, the port of Haifa. I've lived with that image of those colors and those patterns for years and years and years. I didn't know why those colors meant so much to me all my life. I understood the minute I saw it. That's what I remember from my house in Haifa, the tiles and the bird and the sea. Well, the partitioning of Palestine in Resolution 181, 1947, for a country to be born called Israel, that will be majority Jews and minority Arabs, it was not calling for a Jewish state. But when we speak of a Jewish state, we do not have in mind any racial state or any theocratic state, but one which will be based upon full equality and rights for all inhabitants without distinction of religion or race and without domination or subjugation. Canada has refused to receive most of the Jewish refugees from Europe. United States, same thing. And they have preferred to send them to Palestine with massive immigration there, rather than assuming their responsibility to resolve this human tragedy, which is the Holocaust. 
found myself in a position of unexpected significance in the, the UN, in the partition of Palestine. Lester Pearson for us was the guy who got the Nobel Peace Prize for putting the, uh, the United Nations troop between Israel and, and Egypt. So as such, uh, coming and finding out that same Lester Pearson was involved in partitioning a country without consulting the local population whether they were willing to be divided or not. This is illegitimate. My grandfather, a man of big stature, very charitable person, very good person, died poor, blind, and humiliated. It was a peaceful family, good values life. Were very peaceful people. They didn't deserve what they get. They didn't deserve it. 700,000 people left in 1948. They don't deserve it. We thought we were responsible for our parents being uh, angry, upset, nervous. You were deprived of things. You felt you had done something wrong. And the only way I faced that traumatism is basically the first time when I came to Israel and saw that the people uh, of Israel, whether Jews or Arabs, are basically uh, good people. And uh, I suddenly realized the enemy does not have a face. And it's terrible when your enemy doesn't have a face, because the people in the street didn't look like enemies. They were nice people. We had properties of which our own homes uh, bank accounts, shares. It was entirely seized from us without a penny of compensation, without a thought of being repatriated to us. For the simple fact that those few drops of water that baptized me when I was a baby sort of made it impossible for me to come and live here. Yani... فهمت إنه الوالد والعيلة خافوا رحلوا يعني كل جيلنا ما خلى يعني ننتقد انتقاد رهيب إنه كيف كيف أنتوا دار صهيون يعني بالبلدية وعملكم بالحكومة ومع كل أملاك وكل العمل الخيري كنت بتعملوه كيف تتركوا بلدكم وتتركوا هيك الخوف على الولاد يعني أول شيء طلعوكم ثاني شيء الوعد الدول العربية إنه هاي قصة أسبوعين ثلاثة أربعة وبتخلص زي ما إحنا صابنا بالحرب الأخيرة زي ما بالعرب العرب اللي مشبرة وال والشغل الثالث إنه ما حداش كان مآمن إنه هيك راح تنتهي المشكلة In 1967, the Arab countries surrounding Israel and Israel got into a six-day war, and Israel conquered uh, another part of the territories, leaving in territories, or what's called the Palestinian territories, to only 22% of total historical Palestine. Those 22% are being cut off with roads to protect colonies that are being built in those territories all the time. This is a Bandustan, a Gruyere cheese. I mean, if that is not apartheid, I don't know what apartheid means. This is such a beautiful city. It's such a beautiful sea. Why can't I be deprived of this? I have gone nowhere in the world where I felt I was home the way when I stepped in here. And the falafel sandwich that we ate today was an amazing fact. I mean, the guy just gave it to us. He didn't want to take money. Why? Because we're, we're people who have left in 1948, and he is, uh, he is honoring our return. Those people, they make you feel home. This is my home. <laughs> It 
They say the stones, they speak. They tell me things. It's basically civilization. It reflects our culture. New buildings are never built this way. The, the windows, this little arch, this is the architecture of the Moors. You can see it even on the wall. It's the same original wall that existed at the time. وكان في بلد قديمي اللي في 48 حالا بعد قيام الدولة إيه. وبأمر مباشر من بن غوريون آه. هذا اتضح طبعا بكثير متأخر أكثر يعني كان في هنالك أمر إنه بمحو البلد القديم بن غوريون كان بده يمحل بيمحل البلد القديم فور فور شور يعني أيوة. والهدف من هذا كان إنه يمحل البلد القديم لحتى إنه ما ما يضل في إمكانية للعرب اللي طلعوا من البلد القديم أيوة. لوين يرجعوا فبتفوت بتشوف فيش طابع القريه العربيه فقدت طابعها آه. فلذلك انا في خلال شغلي يعني هون احدى محاولات الاساسيه انه بالرغم من كل شيء احافظ على الطابع هذا الطابع العام غير انه يقعد حدد ويوصل لاتفاق كل جدارة ولا نحن بهمنا كثير يعني الحي بضل هيك تراث ان شاء الله يعني. لانه فعلا في عندك طول التلفزيون طول ما في عندنا اسبوع من الشكال اللي بحافظه بيشغف على الوادي ما هي بدها اسبوع كثير الاخوه تبعون حي وادي النسناس تسلم تسلم تسلم, تسلم 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 ابو رمزي انا خلقان فيه بشارعه لمين للعيلة للعيلة جدي على اسم جده على اسم جدي ابراهيم صهيون ابراهيم صهيون في الثلاثينات وبالعشرينات كان عضو بلدية كان سنوات طويلة نائب رئيس بلدية. يعني وهذا الشيء انه حرام انه يعني على القليل يعني ما يكون في الكو على القليل من العيلة يمس العيلة يعني بقلب البلاد يعني الشارع موجود ولكن العيلة مش طيب شو بتقترح يا عمي؟ <تصفيق> انا من الناس اللي مهتمين <تصفيق> انا الاقتراح تبعي طبعا اكيد الاخ وليد معي في الاقتراح هذا نعم تيجي تتملك بقلب حيفا ترجع لشارع صهيون بالذات شوف لك دار تملك فيها أنا يعني انا انا مستعد اجي اتقاعد هون واعمل شغل وعمل شيء وبحكي مع مع وليد يعني بس ما في شك انه الجرح عندنا ما بتسكر ابدا 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 ما بتسكر الحياه تبعتنا هون بس لولا ما الحروبات هاي ولا كان احنا عايشين في جنه احنا بالبيت ماي جاد ذس از سو نايس ذس يو كان دو هير ريسبشنز يو كان دو فور شور واو اكيد اكيد هذا النوتس ذا بليس لا هذا شوف انت شوف البوتنشال بنص المحل. بنص دين المدينه نص حيفا يا نص نص حيفا اي لاف ذا روف ذا ارميد روف ذس از ا جيرمان كولوني ها والتايلز هذول البلاط الاصلي هيك كان ما تغيرش شيء هون بهاي السقف ما تغيرش ولا شيء هذا الباترن تبع مين هذا بتصور هذا البلاط كانوا يجيبوه من لبنان كل يوم طلع آه. باللحظه اللي فيها بتعمل بوليش بتقيم الرائع الفوقاني برجع البلاط الجديد <تصفيق> شايف كله هذا فؤاد إيه. كله هذا هذا الاصلي اللي كان يعني. يا. المنجور كله خشب هذا المنجور ال... كان في شيء كثير حلو هذا الظاهر ما بعرف بس انا ما فيش عندي اي مشكله من دار العجزي هو لا 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 دار عجزي وانت برايك انه مستعدين يبيعوه يعني؟ لا بدهم يبيعوه ايه اكيد لا فور شور <تصفيق> The garden would be fantastic if you can have it. The tennis yes. court is a must. <laughs> the tennis court? Because the tennis always attracts people in the bar, attracts people in the restaurants. Uh, and if you make a banquet place where people can, like in the old time, come back and get married and things like this, this place will pick up a very nice marketing. Uh, With a small swimming pool somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay. Please work on this. Okay. That will bring me back to Haifa. Well, you convinced me. Tomorrow morning you'll have it.
ممنوع نصور هو صور هاي حياتي ها عندك هلا بيتك يس يس شو ما قالوا لك شو ما عملوا لك هذا بيتك ما بس كاني حاسه على سجن ومقطوعه عن اي شيء ثاني لا مش مقطوعه عن شيء هاي بلادنا يلا ليتس جو شعور هيك غريب كثير غريب بالباركينج كثير مزعج القطعه مع انك بتجرب تكون our right of return, wanting to see our house, our properties, was forbidden to us until we became Canadian citizens. Israelis don't like to see us coming. When they see me with a Canadian passport, they're written on it, born in Haifa, comma, Palestine. At the borders, they cannot do anything, I'm Canadian. No, hey, hey, here, here, here. Ah, what's up? Here, first of all, I'm Khouri. Yeah, who was the Papa? Uh, and did you live with your parents and your grandparents in this house? Yes. When my father came here in eight years ago, uh, I had to force him to come here. And he was so afraid about how he was going to react when coming here. And finally, when he took a visa from Jordan, he came here and he took me around describing to me where he lived and how they had to leave in 1948 with a very clear mind. And after he finished, he sat on a chair and he started crying and crying and crying, starting to mourn the 60 years they were out of here and were never able to come back. It was good he got it out of his system because for 60 years, he can not want to go. He can't go. But then it's like, Something. You know what it is, finally, this whole refugee problem? is It's worse than death, because years after years, six decades now are over, and they never came back. So they never really did a closure. It has killed them, killed their personality, killed their outlook, killed the way they brought up their children with a false identity. So it has caused a big problem. And we feel it now with the third generation coming yes. in. But they're going to be very positive, and they're fighting back. You cannot kill people's identity. You cannot. I wanted my children to have uh, a link uh, to Palestine and a moral responsibility. And I thought the best way to do it is to sponsor jointly a child. So it's Layla who sends the money every month for several years now. <laughs> خلق لي نفس النهار أنا وياكي يا الله أجل 11 أيام نحن لاجئين من حيفا تركنا نحن بيتنا 48 وطلعنا لاجئين اليوم ما في مدرسة؟ لا لا شو عم تعملي اليوم بالنهار؟ أدرس تدرس اليوم؟ كل النهار تدرسي؟ لا نص بدرسة ونص تلعبي I think this is what keeps the people of Haifa peaceful, is the view of the sea all the day. I was born with my children, when we told them, how do you like the father? Yes, how do you like it? I mean, all the sea and all the sea that is on the sea. So it was always... There's something to do with the sea, as well as the sea, for the sea and the sea, for the sea and the sea, and you are still in the sea, and you are still in the sea, and you are still in the sea. أول وآخر نفس الشيء أول وآخر نفس الشيء آه. 
ماما يوم اخذت لي خمسة لو بتعرفي وين انا انا واقفة على شط بحر بوتاجي ايه لقيناه ولقيناه فضلا لواحد اسمه جوني منصور يلي هو عارف كل قطعة بحيفا وين وجابنا بالسيارات there would have been no way كنا لقينا لوحدنا because قولي لي كيس زبالة اللي تركته كان في كابنز بقلب المي واقفين على عواميل اه هياتهم بعدهم اه في الرمننت تبع الكابن في هيك عواميل طالعين من نص المي شايفين والبحر ما بيجي عليه حدا عشان مفني من ورا الطريق وتركينه ما بنطفوه كثير تتسلوا عليه شكل كله بالعربي شوي اوكي اتس هارد بريكينج تو سي ذا ليست سو ماتش هيستوري هير such a pitiful state when you think that all your uh, grandparents and parents and grand grandparents and generations have been buried here and you don't know where they are and you see this whole thing vandalized هون اكثر من واحد ايه عيسى عيسى صهيون هي هون عيسى صهيون هون واو هذا عيسى صهيون is here this is my great grand grandfather is here يوسف داوود صهيون هل قد هذا يوسف داوود منين اجيب عشان ينام عيسى صهيون بورن ان ان 19 امتى هذا 1900 كان ينجبروا يحطوا فوق بعضهم ايوه بفتكر هون هذا باب الجزئيه تحت لهي ولا لهناك لهي لهي هون this is a door and right behind totally destroyed there's a good chance that this is my grandmother Because he says all this were Sahyuns. All this was as big as this one. My God, this is incredible. لا خذ الصورة كلها بعرف بس بدي اشوف الخط قبل بعدين باخذ الصورة This is written a gift from Ibrahim Isa Sahyun and his family 1945 So it was a gift from my grandfather to the church تفضل سريح اهلا اهلا وسهلا نحن جينا اخر مره هون مع الوالده الله يرحمها قبل ما تتوفى نعم عندي كيف انا تاثرت كثير بالكنيسه لما شفت صوره العذراء محطوطه ورا ومكتوب مقدمه من ابراهيم صهيون طبعا كثير حن قلبي يعني وكملوا هالتقليد كملوا ساعدوا كنايسكم ساعدونا حتى يضلوا اسم عائله صهيون دائما حي في ذاكره الناس ايه لانه اول مره بيجي لعندي انسان من اصل فلسطيني وحفاوي 
شكرا اللي بيقول لي بحاجه صحتين اللي بيقول لي انا احنا مستعدين نعمل شيء للعرب وللمسيحيين وللكنيسه اللي في اسرائيل واحنا بحاجه لكم من ناحيه او اولا مورال اسبكت اخلاقيا انه في تواصل بيننا وبينكم لانه في نوع من القطيعه ها نسمع انه في ناس معهم مصاري الله يعطيهم العافيه ما بدنا مصرياتكم بدنا اياكم طيب لما يبلشوا يجوا ويمكن يتعرفوا على حضرتك او يشوفوا ناس هيك فعاليات بهالبلد تحكي الحديث الحلو اللي انت حكيته بيطرأ البوم <تصفيق> الله يخليك طيب سيدنا نحن انبسطنا كثير انت شفت شيء من كنت بقريت كتاب من كنت بشي مره؟ لا ما صار لي الفرصه <تصفيق> يعني كثير بصيرنا شرف هيك نقراها يا بلد براذر از فيري ويل نون بوك فيري ويل نون اول اوفر ذا وورلد Hello. Hello. Can we visit inside? I don't know. Uh, sorry. Um, can we see inside? Yes. <laughs> But it's uh, uh, old people. Yeah, I know. I know. Old people yeah. home. Yes. I am. I am old. No, I am you old. Are not. You're White hair. It used to be a hotel in the 50s and in the 60s. Okay. And in the 80s, 1982, it became uh, what it's now, a hospital oh, really? for the ah, It elderly. was a hotel before. It was a hotel oh, until really? 1982. Ah, 82. Quite recent, yeah. Really recent. Yeah. Yeah. My, my father yeah. and my mother and my uncle, yeah. my aunt, got married here. Oh, really? The reception yeah. was here. They it, have the, a historical the, building. Yeah, it is, it seems, huh? Yeah. Well, actually, I'm a historian. Ah, you're yeah. a historian. That's why. Huh? I did a PhD. So how did you end up in uh, running this place? Ah, it is a family business. Ah, this is the original flooring, ah, the way it used to be. Should never change that. Mm. Yeah, while, while talking with this hotel, I had a lot of ideas mm. of turning it into a boutique hotel. Boutique hotel was with, uh, originally with one, one of the idea? ideas that... Uh, but I, but I have a clientele for that. I'm not sure that high is Yes, right I do. Place. I have. Okay. So, Fortunately, and after the war... Yes. Especially now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. of course, temporary. You're doing, that's temporary. 6,000 people left Haifa this year. If people will come to Haifa, yeah. Yeah. will it be... Uh, I know it's... how. I know how. This is my, my business. That hotel has business opportunity type flavor to me. I believe that one day the borders with Lebanon and Syria are going to open. And people are going to be crashing going to Jerusalem, and they will come to a hotel that I run. It's amazing how they've, um, they've thought to do it. And hotels, I love the balcony. You don't like the balconies? Yeah. I think they're superb. They are. Eh? So I wonder why the project of a hotel did not succeed. But it listen, she might have a point this No, day. no. I, they, in their mind, hotel uh, is you know, competing with other type of hotels. You must give it. Yeah, mission. A you must give it yes. uh, a vision. You must yes. give it a clientele. You must. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This But is marketing. Yeah. It becomes marketing at the yeah. end. Yeah. Basically, marketing. You want to start at. And look, you have all the Bahai there. Mm. You got all the beach there. I mean, yeah. you're in the ideal, ideal position. Look at that. Ah, you're optimistic, mon cher ami. Très optimiste. L'emplacement est first class. Oui, mais ces gens-là, ça fait 50 ans qu'ils travaillent sur ça. Si ils avaient une intention d'ouvrir ce pays à d'autres gens, pourquoi ils ne l'ont pas fait? I'm launching a, an idea among uh, some of the friends that we're making here to start an association who will receive requests from the Palestinian in the diaspora about their wanting to come over here for tourism, to come here to look at where they lived, where the roots were, maybe even to do business. Like, I would like to do a business here that will employ people locally uh, with the aim eventually of coming to settle, uh, you know, several months of the year. Do you think that we can obtain some kind of assistance at the government level for setting up something of uh, that nature? If you make it as a kind of economic activity yes. which helps Arabs to find yes. 
not only jobs, but also to produce initiatives. This is exactly what lacks, what's, what's not there in the mm. case of the Arabs in Israel, because they are outside the state in that sense, but they are not really inside the Israeli economy. They are totally marginalized. Yes. Of course, Israeli racists would do a lot of noise. Yeah. They will write, and then Arabs are trying to conquer Haifa. All this nonsense will be there, but they cannot prevent you. Uh, in order to get certain credibility, can it be attached at all with uh, Arab members of, of the Knesset? I think this is exactly this kind of injection is something that the Palestinian Arab society here really needs, mm. uh, this kind of dynamic, that because the Jewish society not only has the state, but it has also the Jewish diaspora. Yes. And the Arabs in Israel have neither the diaspora nor the state. Uh, totally. I mean, they're like orphans. Yes. <laughs> the, this would help. We will be, we'll be ready to help in that. I think this would be something very important to do, yes. Well, Dr. Azmi, it's so heartwarming yeah, to, to hear every once in a while. It sort of gives us a strong boost, yeah. <laughs> בשנה טובה, שנה של בשורות טובות, שנה בלי מלחמות, מכל סוג שהוא, רק אהבה, סובלנות, כבוד הדדי והערכה הדדית. אם אנחנו נדבק באלה, יהיה לנו גן עדן. שנה טובה. Vitamin E. <laughs> but is it something that the municipality will help foreign investment in the country? Uh, the government invests 24 cents for each dollar you put. Even if it's a foreign investment? Yeah, you can go to the house and can find everything. They will have. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what I'm interested in the Windsor Hotel. Oh, take it. Take it. I'll be very. And I want to turn it in a boutique hotel. I've always dreamt of having a house on the sea. Not necessarily in Haifa, but on the sea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this time it's going to have to be in Haifa. Yeah. But I wonder if Haifa is growing. Uh, who yeah. can we ask about this? Uh, ask me. The day this place is going to pick up in value is when the Lebanese border, the Syrian borders are going to open. And that's mm. out of the peace talks with them. Yeah, but if it never happens, and then it, and it, it's going to take a, a while. It's impossible that people can talk to neighbors. I believe our roots are very much similar. We want to live here. I'm sure that her children want peace as my children. I don't want my children to hold guns. I don't want, I didn't want me to hold the gun. I did. He did. We don't want it. 
but you don't influence your, your government. I mean, when there is election, nobody change. I dream that once we will find a way to stop this stupid war. When a Palestinian child died, I'm sure that his mother cried the, the same, same, the same as our mothers cried. We believe in peace, and I think that most of the people who live here believe in peace. Let me ask you something. I was born in Haifa. Okay. I left, I was four years old, and I'm dying to come back and retire here. Okay. Do you think if I come and retire here, I will be welcomed by population around? Yes. Sure. Yes. Especially in Haifa. Yes. Especially in Haifa. Yes. Sure. If, if the occupation is stopped, I may, I, I, it may be a big step for the nice solution of peace. I think it is one of the, bi the big reasons that there is no peace between but, but, us, is the, is the occupation. Because, because... You know, I'm in Israel, we are left wing. Yeah. Everyone, agrees, everyone agrees that we have to stop occupation. But when you say this sentence, that F all refugees has to come back home, which means, which, means, which, means, which means the end of the Jewish state. But you know what's important for us? It's to be given the right of choice if we do want to come back or not. Many would say no, because they don't want to come Ready? and live. If you and don't give us the right of choice yeah. to create a Jewish nation, no deal. No, no, no. no deal. No, 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 no. You have to understand, it is but so I basic. You see? Why should somebody accept to give up a homeland they have just because another people want to take the land and do a new state out of it? Why? Judaism is not just religion. Judaism is a combination of nationality and religious. You have to understand it. But why you are allowed to come from That's the way we are going. Why you are allowed it's from to come from Europe and Palestinians are not allowed to return. Thank you, for me. Thank you very much. I wish you all the best and you are welcome. Thank you. And happy holidays. The Haganah, we're here. Mm -hmm. Behind that building that's round. Right. If you see the bullets, they're still on the building. They were shooting, mm -hmm. and there were some Arab militia that were here. And my mother tells me that one of my uncles, Najib Sahyon, used to come with a pistol. <laughs> you can't do anything with a pistol here. Yeah. You're trying to shoot the, uh, the Jews. <laughs> but the other militias had guns. Actually, in January, yeah. began the uh, Jewish onslaught on Haifa and the surrounding of Haifa. The orders were to oust the people of Haifa. It's not as if the orders were to leave Haifa as a binational city. Yes. And um, the pressure began by sniping and bombardments of three-inch mortars from where today is the hospital Neitzion. I don't know if you can see a big square building there. Yeah, that's the one on top. Yeah. Okay. This is where they positioned their uh, uh, motor and they started bombarding all this area. We received a letter from the Haganah, mm -hmm. uh, my family, that if we don't get those people out, then they're gonna blow up the whole building. Yes. And the cousin of my mother, uh, he was Abiyad from the Abiyad family. Right. He was bringing in bread. You see where the arrow is here? Yes, I do. Like he was sniped and killed. So from below? From below. Right. And he, he just died on, uh, on the, and we couldn't even go and save him. But when the letter came, uh, that they're gonna blow up the building. My grandfather, Ibrahim Sahyun, who was on the, the Jabal Street, mm -hmm. his daughter was in uh, Alexandria, and he, uh, he suggested that we all go to Alexandria, spend some the summer there. You never imagine that you cannot go back. And there was no way they can imagine. They could have not known, because most of the Jewish forces did not know yet ah. that, there is, that there was a master plan for cl ethnically cleansing Palestine. That's the point. Yes. On the 10th of March, 1948, mm. the Haganah leadership decided to adopt Plan Dalet, Plan yes. D. Yes. That is when they've decided they would try and expel as many Palestinians as possible from mm. Palestine. I feel, as a, as a person who feels very, very, very strong about the right of return, right. and um, not only from an ideological point of view, I like the city. Mm -hmm. If I want to be an abiding citizen of that country, uh, invest into a business that can give me some income and live here. Do you think that there will ever be a formula in my lifetime where with political settlement or without political settlement that I can do that? I'm a Canadian citizen today. Right. 
Well, I think, unfortunately, not in the foreseeable future. I yeah. think this is an ethnic state which uh, is excluding uh, anyone who is not Jewish from these basic rights that you are talking about. No, I, I think that uh, the um, present uh, diplomatic process, even if it's renewed, we don't have it, even a diplomatic process, this will not lead to that kind of a solution. What we'll need is something much more drastic and dramatic, which is in many ways the desionization of the state, which will happen. I believe it will happen. I'm not sure it will happen in my lifetime or your lifetime, but it will happen. It's a long struggle. It's a just struggle. Uh, and there is a need for a strong help from the outside world. In my dreams to go and retire in, in Haifa, I wanted to have a social contribution. When you turn a hotel that is dear to you, you'll be able to contribute to the society because you want to make it an open hotel, not a Jewish hotel. Create again this aura of before 1948, where that hotel would become a place for weddings, a place for cultural activities, an open hotel. I was told by the municipality of Haifa that this old people home was for sale. And they even give me figures about what it will cost to buy it and transform it. And then I got a call from the director of tourism because the Sheraton has bought the hotel. This is not a straightforward deal. You're not gonna buy 1.2 million from a Sheraton chain. So obviously, word has passed around. You know, be careful, there are Arabs coming to pick up that hotel. You know, it puts a lot of interrogation marks. Would you buy it afterwards and not get a permit to build because you're not Jewish? The environment and the way it happened sort of made me feel there was behind the scene type hanky-panky going on in there. I still believe, as a businessman, it's something that will flourish in peacetime. الإمكانيات طبعا كل الوضع اليوم صعب على الشعب الفلسطيني يعني الحياة صعبة جدا الصور هذا يعني أثر على نفسيات الناس بشكل فظيع يعني صفيت أنت كأنك عايش في السجن الناس اللي عايشة في السجون بتلاقي مين يطعمها لكن أنت عايش في السجن وبدك تطعم نفسك. He was born with the name of his father who was shot by the Israelis. مرحبا. أنت شو اسمك؟ أنت شو اسمك؟ شو اسمك؟ يا بطل أقوى. صار إيه؟ أيوة هي كف أوي كف أوي عنده إخوي هي وتأخر اثنين أصحاب إلى وحكوا إن هذا الولد طالع بدي عن جندي ومجانا هذا طب هذا بقدر يحمل سكين آه لا تألم كثير هو أول ما بس الحين بالسجن عادي يعني يمكن مش زي ما كان كان قاعد خمس شهور في المسكوبية شو المسكوبية المسكوبية هاد للتحقيق بس للتعذيب بس يعني لها قاعد خمس تشر فيها بعد خمس تشر وهو بيقدر يحكي معك هي ولا شو عم بيعمل لا 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 ما بضربوهم إذا بدي يحكي بس ببين علامات يعني طب انتم ما بتحسوا بالغضب ولا بتحسوا ب والله انا اول يعني مره يعني كنت رايح حكوا ان طفل ظابط السيجاره في عين محمود طب انت ساجد لما بتشوفي اخوك هيك عم عبي... عم بيضربوه شو بتكون شو بتحسي انت؟ انه اساعده انه يطلع من السجن امم شو بتحبي اكثر شيء؟ أطلع محامية أدافع عن وطني وعن آه بتحبي؟ أمم حابة يا برافو عليك عشان تحكي حلو فيك تحكي وقتها بطريقة منيحة آه بس هلا إن شاء الله أخوك بيرجع على البيت إن شاء الله تغني أنت صوتك حلو شكله إيه قولي يلا 
نحن مش إرهابي نحن شعب الحرية إسلام ومسيحي أمتنا عربية نحن بكل ميم التحديد وحدتنا وإيمان الدين بدنا نحرش فلسطين فلسطين عربي ضاربونا بصواريخ ضاربنا بحجارة قتلوا الأقصى والتاريخ قتلوا طفل المغارة بس عبط هاي كتير 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 يلا سلامات الله معك الله معك ان شاء الله at not understanding what's going on. It's years of, of accumulation of problem solution, problem solution that we barely know anything about. And you feel you're coming here, you know, disrupting their lives when we sit comfortably back there in Canada, doing our own stuff. So I feel it pretty hypocritical yeah, to come here. طب في شيء انا مضايقني اكثر شيء ضايقنا نحن من الحديث اللي صارت ام ساجده البنت اللي نحن متبنينا في حبس للاطفال على عم بيقول عددهم ضخم يعني ضخم جدا بالاف ولكن لما انت عندك ناس موجودين في مخيمات لاجئين في وضع مزري فيش عندهم امال وفيش عندهم نوع من الاوبتيميزم التفاؤل الحياتي الاني فهون بتعلقوا بالحلم البعيد اللي, اللي هو اسمه حلم العودة أنا مش عم بقول إنه اللي بيحلم بالعودة هذا حلم مش منيح بالعكس بس ممنوع الإنسان ينشل في مجالات العمل الأخرى لأنه النتائج الحياتية عليه وعلى أهله وعلى جمع وعلى مجتمعه عاطلة جدا بعدين بده أمل هاي السألة بس إسا هو جعان بده يأكل أبوه جعان ومريض بده يأكل بده مصاري حتى يشتغل في الخبز ومثل ما قال هم صاروا من شلين دير نم ما عندهم شعور لما كان في مفاوضات سنة التسعة وتسعين بين, بين عرفات وبين براك عمليا فجأة صرنا نشوف إنه المخيمات الفلسطينية في الضفة وفي الغزة وفي لبنان وفي صارت فجأة دبت فيها الحيوية صاروا يعملوا مسيرات وكل واحد صار يطول مفتاح بيته القديم وفجأة دبت فيهم ال ال الحيوية وال والأمل صاروا يشوفوا إنه ممكن بكرة بعد بكرة في نوع من الحلم هذا ممكن يتحقق فلما صار في انهيار بالمفاوضات رجعوا للإحباط رجعوا للإحباط رجعوا لليأس رجعوا لليأس ولمستنقع الجوع والإهانات والذل فعمليا هذا اللي بولد العمليات اللي احنا بنشوفها لأنه مش يعني انت لما بتيجي بتفكر كيف ممكن صبية عمرها 16-17 سنة تقنع نفسها انه تحط على جسمها المتفجرات وتروح تفجر حالها صار والانسحاق ما هي الكلمة اللي عم بدور عليه الانسحاق المطلق الموت هو الفرج من شان ينقذ حاله من مستنقع ال ال اللي عايش فيه. أبو الوليد زعيمهم أبو الوليد يا فاد الحرية يا أمير ابن هالأمارة So the question is, do we have to wait for a political settlement before we exercise an alternative right to return and live in the place where we were born, where our identity is, with Canadian passport? 
when it comes to certain basic uh, resolution of the United Nations, of which the one that concerned me most, that asked for the right of return of refugees, which is a basic, basic human right. That resolution is voted every year at the General Assembly, every year. Canada now votes against that resolution. This is a shame. I strongly believe that will come a day, and I hope I'll be alive, will come a day where we'll be able to go and live there and work there and develop it, and it be becoming a democratic, one man, one vote type country. <laughs> Oh,